to go to university or not. The debate that consumes millions of aspirational artists at some point in their early careers. And that goes without saying, it's the exact same for me. Many are actually putting college off, dropping out, or not going at all. What makes the most sense? Do I take time out of the workforce or can I work immediately? Some studies show that you can make up to a million dollars more over a lifetime with the college degree. Even though I'm already in my third year of university, I feel like I'm no closer to answering that question. But anyways, here's where I'm at. I've taken two gap years so far, and every time I've been sitting through a boring lecture, inevitably listening to a professor talk to me about something, I will likely never use my life again, I think about how much more productive those two gap years were compared to, well, this. Does the author's use of the prison? So as you can probably imagine in this video, I'm going to be discussing exactly why I think university isn't important. However, at the same time, I'll be trying to see it from the other perspective too. And at the end of the video, come to some sort of impartial conclusion to answer the question, what is the point of university for anyone aspiring to work in an artistic field? Basically, is it worth it to get a Bachelor of Arts? Okay, so before we start, here's a real quick disclaimer. I must preface this by saying that everything I'm talking about in this video is from my personal opinion, and I don't mean to try to persuade anyone to drop out of college or to join either. I just want to share my opinions that I've formed through my personal experiences and a bit of research too. Okay, so let's get into it. So my story is I took a gap year right after high school and then did a year of university then went back and did another gap year, and then went back and did another year of university. And now I'm halfway through my third year of university. This is where I go, UBC. And for most of my second year, I spent my time questioning what the point of this whole thing is, and frustratingly not finding the answer. My questioning of this form of education is largely due to the fact that I was able to find work in my area of passion, in film and photography, before going to university. I enjoyed doing the work, I had a clear path to grow, where a lot of my coworkers also didn't go to university, and some of my bosses explicitly mentioned the lack of emphasis they placed on university degrees when hiring. Uh, it, the, it, it's not, it's, it, there's no need even to have a college degree. And they paid pretty well too. Needless to say, the work that I was doing, I enjoyed much much more than the content I was learning about in class here. For example, in one of my classes that I took last year, we studied this instructional video from around the 1920s about how a grain of rice was created. And from my perspective, it just didn't seem at all relevant or interesting. And if I compare that to what I was getting paid to do outside of university, such as editing videos about the Great Barrier Reef for CNN. It's one of the natural wonders of the world. Or filming exciting advertisements for Own Academy. There seemed to be no comparison whatsoever in what was more valuable to developing my skills as a filmmaker. And that leads me to my main point against going to university. There is no better way to learn practical skills than to actually work on projects that require those practical skills. Just as a quick metaphor, no football player has ever become good by sitting in a classroom learning the theory behind why a skill move works and the history of that skill move. They went onto the pitch and practiced that skill move, then used it in a match, and that cemented their fluency in completing the skill. And it's the exact same for filmmaking, or any art for that matter. Additionally, it just seems like a much better idea to get paid while developing practical skills compared to paying money to go through a course that wouldn't give you as many opportunities to develop those skills. But there's another problem, at least here at UBC, and I assume the rest of North America too, and that has to do with how much of your class time you actually spend learning about your chosen discipline. You see, a large chunk of a degree is consumed with electives. Classes that have to be different from your chosen discipline. Essentially, in my opinion, fluff that is completely irrelevant to what you're studying. That is sold to us as developing a quote-unquote well-rounded education. For example, a couple of the classes that I am taking on my ongoing journey to obtaining a film studies degree are Italian, Atmospheric Sciences, and Engineering for Non-Engineers. All of which, albeit quite interesting, don't have any relevance to improve myself as a filmmaker. Let's dive a little deeper. What's truly absurd is to get a film degree, at least here at UBC, I need to acquire 60 credits of non-film related classes, whereas I only need to acquire 42 credits of actual film classes. So that's 20 non-film classes and only 14 film classes to get a film degree. You see where my problem with this is? And although it's probably different for different majors, it just seems to me that with the time I'm spending on these electives, I could instead focus on actually filmmaking as opposed to learning about engineering. 
And finally, people are always marveling about the necessity of having a degree, which I understand. It displays a certain level of qualification, not only in the field that one may have studied, but also just showing that someone has the grit and determination to complete a challenge. However, there are so many people now with university degrees and it's continuing to increase year by year, which means that the value of an undergraduate degree is slowly decreasing and therefore the advantage one gains in looking for a job with a degree is slowly decreasing too. And especially in more artistic fields like design or film, where most people hiring seem to be more concerned with the actual experience and practical ability you have, spending those four years developing a portfolio and a solid CV may be more beneficial than a four-year university degree. And so you don't have to just take my word for it, I hopped on a Zoom call with my old boss and owner of Own Academy, Natalie Chan, to get her opinion of it. There are certain jobs like doctor, lawyer, that really requires you to have the academic degree. But most jobs in the world don't actually require you to have an academic degree because you actually learn a lot of that in the job. And frankly, we know that a lot of education content has not changed in the past 20 years. 50 years. So when the world has changed so fast with the careers that don't require a professional degree, I would much prefer someone that has more practical experiences on their CV than an academic experience. Because practical experiences implies that you have actually engaged in different projects, you have solved problems on the ground, you have like made a project happen, which is a much more valuable skill than saying simply saying that I can write a piece of paper that can get me an A. You need to really apply your knowledge in an actual setting to make things work in the real world. And the real world is so different from the academic world. So I would value a practical CV of someone that has you know, maybe less of a grade um, excellence, but has done many different you know, engagements of internship, mentorship, than someone that is a straight A student. Okay, so I know at the moment I've painted university to be this evil place where you go to spend your money, take boring classes, and still stunt your development. But there are some positive aspects to it too. So let's go over that. I think primarily university is typically thought of as a stepping stone to a stable job. A qualification that you can attain through hard work and perseverance that guarantee companies in whichever field you are in that you are good at what you do. And it works tremendously well for certain fields, especially in the sciences and business. But as we discussed earlier, it's a little more open in the arts. So there must be another reason to pay all that money to study at university and get an arts degree. For some, me included, it was a chance to leave home, experience life with a different culture, learn to live independently, but most of all, that dreaded cliche that people love to throw around, to find your purpose. Which is a very privileged lens to be looking at this from, and that's not to say that you can't find yourself without university, but rather it's a cornerstone of the university experience you pay for. But still, that's not quite enough of a reason to go to university. Not good enough! So let's move on to the biggest reason I've come to believe it's a good idea to pursue a higher education. And that is to develop soft skills. The definition of soft skills is the personal attributes that enable someone to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. You see, in an arts degree, we spend pretty much every class working in groups, discussing different points of view about high-level thinkers' work, and trust me when I tell you, there are some disagreements here and there. The way these classes help guide us to come to a consensus of these difficult to understand and contentious topics, especially when there are so many differing points of view, creates essential life skills like empathy, integrity, resilience, and teamwork skills, which are very important aspects when working in groups, which is an inevitable part of working in almost any industry. The content that we are learning about almost doesn't really matter. You could take film or politics or 16th century history, and you will likely develop these incredibly functional and effective soft skills, which will help you in all facets of professional life. On top of that, the level of writing we read and the type of language that is used in these texts is something I personally would never be exposed to outside of university, which means that critical thinking, comprehension skills, and vocabulary are all developed at the same time too. Let me give you a quote from one of my most recent readings in class from the big daddy of documentary himself, John Grierson. Documentary can achieve an intimacy of knowledge and effect impossible to the shim-sham mechanics of the studio and the lily-fingered interpretations of the metropolitan actor. Like what? That's, that's a crazy sentence. I've never read anything like that outside of a university context. And while I may never use the phrase lily-fingered again in my life, it's these types of phrases that add color and depth to your vocabulary and overall just expand your general knowledge, which can never be a bad thing. But it goes even deeper than that. 
the theories we learn about are not all in agreement of one another. So it isn't just about memorizing certain facts and regurgitating them onto a sheet of paper, although that is part of it. But more often than not, it's about thinking critically about the extremes of these various theories available to us and evaluating the context behind where these certain theories work, where others may fall short, verbalizing our thoughts on the spot, and then asking further questions. This not only teaches us the information, but how to communicate complex ideas effectively, and most importantly, how to learn, which will be a vital skill pretty much forever. Although at the beginning of this video, I initially discussed the negative aspects of spending so much time learning theory over getting practical experience, there are also some benefits to studying theory that you'd want to not miss out on. One quote from a paper I read about the importance of theories reads, when knowledge precedes action, coherent plans replace floundering and groping attempts at solutions. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's say for example, you are a filmmaker and a big client asks you to complete a job utilizing techniques you have never used before. How do you go about creating this video? If you don't have any theoretical knowledge and for some reason there aren't any YouTube tutorials to help you out, you'd probably just start experimenting and who knows how long that would take. However, if you're able to draw on theoretical knowledge, it will definitely be of help when figuring out the practicality of this new technique you need to learn. And of course, you'd still need to go through plenty of experimentation before your big shoot day, but just having apt theoretical knowledge will get you to reach a successful solution a lot sooner than if you just started experimenting without the knowledge of theory to guide you in the right direction. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack in all of this. The debate on whether the practical or theoretical is more important, whether the soft skills you learn in university are worth the money you spend on tuition, and if four years worth of working on developing your portfolio would put you in a better position than obtaining a university degree. It's a difficult question to answer, and I think it largely depends on what your goals are and where your personal values lie, as well as your economic situation. One question that can be answered though is if there's any benefit to going to university. And the answer to that question, in my opinion, is yes. Simply because it provides you with a structure to learn the theory behind your art in a very clear and explicit way, which will definitely provide you with a deep and well-rounded understanding of it while creating an avenue for developing important life skills that will be hugely important in all facets of your life. But with that said, is it completely necessary? Definitely not, as all of this is still possible to learn outside of a university context, albeit requiring a little more self-motivation. In my opinion, there is no right path to take. And to be honest, with regards to whether going to university was the right decision or not for me, I don't think I can provide a 100% concrete answer to that question yet. Although I will say that I do have a newfound appreciation for what I'm learning at my time in university, which I've developed kind of through creating this video. Also, during my conversation with Natalie, she mentioned that she was working on a new project at OWN, which would address a lot of the frustrations that I talked about in this video. So I'll quickly let her explain that to you. The OWN degree is going to be the world's first real world experience degree. And this degree will reward students who are working on their passion projects or time that they spend in the real world volunteering, doing internships or work experience. And when you have this own degree, what it means is that it shows that you're passionate, that you have grit and that you've built the skills that future employers are looking for. And in the future, we want employers to be looking at your CV, not just from the academic perspective, from what degree you get in your university, but also with the own degree, because that symbolizes that you are a holistic person and that you're actually ready for the future of work. Finally, I wanna say that this was largely opinion-based, so I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this in the comments below. Also, I definitely didn't go over all the various factors out there, so definitely feel free to start a discussion in the comments below and maybe eventually we'll find an answer to that dreaded question we've been talking about. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Ciao.